Hey, hey, welcome back everybody. Marcel Ernie Racing. I'm doing a little catch up from the House of Commons yesterday. Trudeau talking, promoting his 23% carbon tax. 23% carbon tax. And where does all that 23% carbon tax go to helping the environment? Well, he's met zero goals so far, eight years into his reign. He has not met a single goal with that money besides inflation, food prices increasing, everything increasing, our healthcare going to shit. Should I go on? Immigration out of control, no housing. We got the housing crisis on and on and on. Medi attacking our medical autonomy, supporting proxy wars that have nothing to do with us. In fact, they're actually promoting the military industrial complex of NATO, uh, not wanting to investigate anything important and putting emergency actors on. Sorry, I'm ranting, let's go. The Honorable Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, it's been eight years since this costly Prime Minister took office, but it was two years ago that he signed a deal with the NDP leader where in the latter promised that it would bring more affordable food. Since that time, the NDP and Liberals have helped raise food prices by 20%. Their favorite inflationary instrument is the carbon tax. Now they plan to quadruple the carbon tax on the farmer who produces the food and the trucker who ships the food and therefore all who buy the food. The Canada's food pre professor is calling for a cap on the carbon tax. Will the Prime Minister cancel his 23% carbon tax hike for April 1st? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Once again, we heard in Parliamentary Committee yesterday absolutely no evidence, no data to support the Leader of the Opposition's contention uh, that the price on pollution impacts on grocery prices. The reality is, Mr. Speaker, our price on pollution returns four times a year more money uh, to 80% uh, of Canadians in the areas where it is in, uh, it is in play uh, than uh, it costs them. That's how we can both fight against climate change and put more money in the pockets of Canadians. Uh, the leader of the opposition is proposing to take away those four times a year rebate checks from Canadians. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, the NDP also promised affordable housing when they sold out their constituents and signed on to a coalition with the Leader of the Liberals. But since that time, the rent is up well over 20% as they fund more bureaucracy to block homes and deficits that drive up interest rates. So much so that Tim Chen, a student in Vancouver, actually needs to commute to university from Calgary. Yes, he has to fly back to Calgary where he can afford the rent under a conservative government, and then fly over to Vancouver in a commute in order to study. Mr. Speaker, how crazy is it that you have to commute across? Right Honourable Prime Minister. That is crazy. That's crazy. Mr. Speaker, the leader of the opposition likes to talk about the challenges Canadians are facing, and while we're busy solving them, he's proposing non- and while we're busy solving these problems that we created, well, we're not really going to solve any, but we're going to talk about solving them. But we created the problems, but we're not going to talk about us creating the problem. Holy crap! Sensical solutions. Let's talk about the Conservative leader's housing plan. It won't build homes fast enough, it doesn't reach enough cities, and it creates unnecessary bureaucracy. He'll also rip up our housing accelerator agreements, which are unlocking half a million new homes, and he'd put the GST back on apartment construction. Housing experts like Mike Moffat say his plan is exceptionally weak and a sign that, quote, the Conservatives don't understand or the scale of the housing crisis. We'll take no that's freaking hilarious the scale the scale at which he created the housing crisis uh it's just so crazy that they can get away with this and nobody's going in the court and just be or into the house of commons and just throwing everybody in jail like jesus Sorry. the honorable leader of the opposition mr speaker the results speak for themselves when i was the housing minister rent was 950 dollars it's now over $2,000. When I was the housing minister, the average mortgage payment on a newly purchased home was $1,400. It's now over $3,500. And my common sense plan would require cities permit 15% more home building as a condition of getting federal money, require they build housing around transit stations rather than having empty fields there, and sell off 6,000 federal buildings and thousands of acres of federal land to build, build, build. Why won't he build homes instead of building bureaucracy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let alone take that money away from CBC and sell all the CBC real estate, which is a ton of it. They got, bil they got billions of dollars of CBC real estate. 
Right Honourable Prime Minister. The reality is Canadians just can't trust Conservatives and their attacks and their talking points. Why? Because an active paid lobbyist is the one giving them uh, all of, all their advice on how uh, to win their... Isn't it crazy? An active paid lobbyist? Like, that's exactly what you could say is happening with the Liberal. They're being persuaded, lobbied, absolute corruption with all their decisions that are purposely destroying Canada, all the G7 countries purposely destroying a virus that kills its host, guys. The most, we've never been more corrupt than now. Campaign. The reality is, Mr. Speaker, the big business and money behind the Conservative Party is once again driving their agenda as they... What about the, all the pharmaceutical companies that you're involved with, Mr. Trudeau, Turdo? Pose cuts to vulnerable Canadians, underinvestments in housing, and no solutions to the very real challenges Canadians are facing. They're in the pocket of big business, as evidenced by Jenny Burns' work for Loblaws. The Honourable Member from Winnipeg South Centre. Mr. Speaker, yesterday after months of debate in this House, albeit without the support of a single member of the Conservative Party, we voted to advance the new Canada-Ukraine Free Trade Agreement. President Zelensky and the thousands of Canadian-Ukrainians I represent in my riding of Winnipeg South Centre expect our government to be there for them, and we have been every step of the way. Can the Prime Minister... We, uh, I'm sure their riding understands the military-industrial complex, even if they are actually Actually supporting what you're saying I'm sure they are supporting the mur the killing of a million Ukrainians for nothing when they could have had peace talks two years ago and actually gained a lot better agreement than they will ever get now because now you, mur you essentially murdered with your military industrial complex a forcing of no peace talks over two years you've murdered a million Ukrainians literally there'll be no Ukrainian men left and now their women are even forced to conscript and oh Ukraine's going to have another offensive to murder another 100,000 people for no reason and gain nothing from it nothing besides destroying the land so blackrock can buy up all the land which they're already doing in ukraine and own this very fertile black earth for growing everything the bill gates is and everybody taking over uh, the money laundering will just ramp up and with all your bio labs in ukraine what about that <laughs> anyways ernie racing news guys have a good one cheers can't wait for tucker carlson to interview interview putin we'll finally get it all on the table you got to see there's a risk that putin is that no, tucker carlson is taking not by interviewing Putin specifically, but the backlash, the attacks he's going to get, possibly even on his life. Because this is like, he's in the military, he's going against the military industrial complex, Tucker. There, you, this is like 9-11. You can't get, this is big, big business. A $15 trillion a year business. Trillions. And we don't even know how many billions that is. A thousand billions is a trillion. Like, this is an insane amount of money. People can't even get a grasp of this value anymore because everything just costs so much. But he is actually going to be... He's already a target. And now he, he's, you know, he's turning a blind eye to the danger to be the only news reporter that can get this out about what's the real story about the, the military industrial complex what's the real story about ukraine what's the real story about the bio labs what's the real story about um the usa nato building up all their missile bases breaking their treaty and moving in on russia what is about the donbass region being bombed since 2014 after the coup instigated by victoria newland of the biden administration well uh, she has been doing it the whole time uh, even before biden um, on and on and on. It's it's gonna be it's just gonna be a huge event, guys. I just can't under we cannot underestimate how important this interview is. We've all a lot of us have seen Putin give maybe not interviews but give his speeches from his brain, by the way, not from a teleprompt, which gives you all insight into the information, along with Sergey Lavrov, you know, the Russian Minister of Foreign Affairs, which then YouTube and everybody else tries to completely censor and they won't let any of these interviews. I got a strike from Sergey Lavrov at the Diplomacy Forum. You know, they, they call it, they give you a hate hate speech strike of a guy talking, answering questions from MSNBC and all these people from Japan and all of the news from around the world. It's absolutely insane, the censorship, guys. Ernie Racing.